This is SSN. Story Studio Network. Welcome to the Leading Ladies Networking After Show Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Trafford. Oh, we are in it. We are in the hot, hot heat of summer. The thermostat says it's 22 degrees, but that is a lie. It's like 46 at least. (laughs) We're talking about being fans of naked podcasting here, folks, because it really is that hot in Nova Scotia right now. And when the temperature reaches this fever pitch, here's what happens in business. We all kind of slow down a little. We all need to take a breather. We all need to reassess. Take a break recalibrate. So when we're feeling the heat, it actually is likely a good time to search for new ways of showing back up in life afterwards. Talk about the new priorities that we're looking toward, reaching back out to contacts, reevaluating some key goals. And this is what we want to talk about right now while we're all sitting here in the swelter of the summer. So joining me in studio right now, of course, is the leading lady. How come that's not your title? Men O'Reilly, you are the leading lady. Well, I uh, dub myself the networking queen, so I think that's pretty strong. The networking queen, the leading lady, (laughs) the queen bee, all the things. And joining us as well from downtown Dartmouth. And from the booming metropolis of New Minas, Nova Scotia, we have Shauna Selig and Cindy Viner, together who form Viner and Selig Wealth Management. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. How is everyone feeling today? Warm. Good. Warm. Yes. Warm. <laughs> Hot even. <laughs> Re- ready to have the conversation. Hey, yes. listen, I need to know, how did everything go at the last big networking event at the Halifax Club? Because I feel like we were talking about how the Halifax Club has air conditioning last time we chatted, Mena. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I definitely got to jump in here. It was, again, a day like today. It it was almost like bordering on 40, high humidity. And, you know, I'm getting ready to host this beautiful networking event. So I've got my dress picked out, but I know I have to walk like a few blocks for parking and kind of lug a couple things in. So I had my walk outside sweaty outfit all picked up <laughs> and then I switched when I got in there and I, every single face when we walked into the Halifax club was just this sigh of relief of how beautifully air conditioned, not humid it was in there. It was, it was just a blessing. It was amazing. Yeah. And Cindy, you were there, right? I feel like I saw you in the pictures. You both I were was. there. Yeah, yes. yeah. How was, yeah, how yeah. was that new venue for you? Well, everybody says in Nova Scotia, you know, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. So yeah, I, we, uh, we were out pre prior to the event and then walked slowly down to the Halifax club because we did not wear our sweat clothes. Um, so slowly walked down and, uh, went in and it was very nice that it was air conditioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a branding opportunity. Yeah. This is, this is Mena. This is a branding opportunity for leading ladies. This let's have like pre-event sweat clothes yes t-shirts and bike shorts yes like zip up hoodie and then you can just tear it off and like have your have your outfit ready to slip back on and you're good to go yeah yeah well honestly you have to kind of put these thoughts into all of the events that you go to but networking in particular you want to look your best and feel your best and so it can be tricky with our broad spectrum of weather in Nova Scotia. No kidding. Shauna, how did you experience the Halifax club compared to previous events? It was beautiful. Like just the space was great. Having the kind of two different rooms, you could go between them. Um, Yeah. So it was nice just to have that flow back and forth, I think, which was a nice change. Um, And yeah, I mean, just talking about the weather, I remember being at one where there was a snowstorm right? One leading ladies where there's a big snowstorm is the same kind of thing. Like you had to kind of plan your outfits, you know, what you were going to wear to get there, then how you were going to get, yeah. What you're going to wear in the, in the space, because it does get so warm with all those women, all that energy. 
you know, it does get very warm. We just hit on like an unexpected, incredible tip for networking because I didn't right. expect us to talk about this, but it's such a critical part, right? It's part yes. of the preparation. How do you want to feel? What do you want to wear? And like, check the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weather is yeah. so important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, have to, we have to be prepared for all the different le- layers and levels. And, but most importantly, how you want to feel and represent yourself when you mm-hmm. get in there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it can be a challenge. So one of the things that I, I want to come back to and circle around to for this next conversation is, you know, we've really kind of established why networking is important in episode one, which if you haven't listened to it, it was a banner episode because we did it live from the floor of the event, which was wild. I feel like we were shouting at each other over the table because it was so loud in there. Um, and that one was with uh, the incredible, beautiful, talented, smart Nicole Milesbrook. And then the last episode we did, we chatted with Anita Kirkbride from Twerp Communications um, about conferences and prepping for conferences. But As we headed into this episode, I really started to think it's hot. We don't have another networking event until the fall. We've got a little bit of reprieve to reassess. And so Cindy and Shauna here to talk a little bit about money. Like, let's talk about this. So first of all, what do you two do that's so incredible? We work with clients who are wanting to have a very clear picture of what their financial future looks like Mm. and are our target group, our the group that we align with is uh, women, professional women, um, entrepreneurial women, business owners who are looking for them and their family to have a really clear picture of their financial future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we say we're here to create the most financially empowered generation of women this country has ever seen. So um, yeah. I will wear that T-shirt. <laughs> We are, yeah, we are on, (laughs) on that mission. I love that. So do you see, like, is there a, like an ebb and a flow to the way that women might handle these financial conversations or wealth building versus men? Like, is there a particular way that we need to be talking to each other about wealth and building that's, that's not so common? I think we just had a conversation with someone before this about, uh, women and talking about money and the lady that we were working just meeting with was saying she had a conversation with someone in her car, someone that she was friends with, someone that she had done business with. And she's like, well, how much do you make? And she's like, that's rude. Mm. Like, you don't ask those questions. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're really um, finding that. I mean, if we're going to be really honest between men and women and no offense to any men in the room, but men aren't as 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 likely to hide their wealth. They're not as likely to not want to talk about how much they make versus women typically, um, and this is not everybody, but typically are less likely to want to share the details of their finances. Um, They certainly don't historically, statistically want to share them with the old guy that's been sitting in the corner for 40 years selling selling things. <laughs> so, this is a podcast and you can't see this, but uh, managing producer Dave Trafford is in the room and he is the old guy who's been sitting in the corner for 40 years. We just broke the fourth wall there, people. But here's the thing, Cindy, is this is, this is I, I love that you took it here for a couple reasons. Number one, because I know that there are hundreds of women who are listening to this episode right now over the summer thinking this is the perfect time for me to go and sit and even just make a list of the questions I have that I don't want to be judged for having, A, and B, in my show notes, one of the questions I had, and I think I'll direct this to you, Mena, is, is is picking up on what you just mentioned, Cindy, is, is it taboo to talk about money at a networking event? Ooh. Okay. Well, in the context of what Cindy just said, um, I don't really see too many women walking around asking each other how much they make. (laughs) Precisely. Yeah. (laughs) However, I do think there is you know, um, a lot going on in marketing where on social media, people are sharing how much they're making from launches, from their latest round of sales of X, Y, Z. And I said Z because I'm a Canadian. 
product or service and they're sharing how much they're earning online. Mm -hmm. So there, the tide has completely turned. And although I haven't really heard too many women talk about it live at networking events, I'm certainly seeing it everywhere online. Yeah. Shauna, what, what, what is, what's your take on that trend of talking about, you know, I made this much money at a launch, but then you're seeing behind the scenes. So you also know how I'll use a fake word, how truthy that is. Yes. Yes. And that's interesting because the same as men, I'm seeing that I'm seeing more and more women kind of sharing and it's a lot of entrepreneurs, right. Who are sharing their successes and wanting to inspire, empower, I think other women, you know, to, to kind of reach those heights and have those successes. So that's wonderful to see, but there is kind of still that, I don't know if it's stigma, shame, or just that kind of, um, ick, sometimes women have around sharing, but we found, I think the biggest thing at leading ladies is just the connections that we're able to build. So no, women aren't coming up to us necessarily and saying, I make this much money or I have this much in savings or what should I be doing? But they find out who we are and what we do. And they're more open having that conversation with us because they've met us face to face, even if it's just that one time, right? It's just about building that connection. Mm -hmm. So that helps bridge I guess the discomfort around the conversation a little bit. Well, it comes back to that whole relationship being the key component to everything, business building and wealth building. Yeah. I think as well, once people who have met us even once will sit down and have a conversation, women are not shy to say exactly what they have, exactly how much they have. They don't know how they stack up against A, B, or C. And we just very quickly bring it back down to, it doesn't matter how you stack up. It's where you want to be. Mm. Right. It's, it's, you know, you might be here and you might wonder if everybody else is here and it just doesn't matter. Where do you need to be to get to your goals? And that's what we try to focus on. And I think that's why people are very open with us about about their money, their savings or investments, because mm -hmm. we bring it back down like, oh, you'll never achieve that. Yeah, you'll achieve whatever that is for you. Right. It's all in context. Absolutely. Men has got a big smile and a nod. Do you, do you yeah. feel that as a business owner? Like, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And I do want to uh, draw attention to the fact that it, it ties everything together is that uh, Shauna and Cindy made a goal of meeting 100 women this year. And I definitely always tie back networking to being strategic and setting goals. So I have to applaud you for your goal of meeting a hundred women that you didn't know before this year. And I'm curious where you are so far as we are halfway through the year. So number 45 um, was just yesterday. So I don't, we don't count the women that we're just meeting at leading ladies. It's actually sitting down, having coffee, tea, conversation, uh, going for a walk at the dog park, whatever that conversation looks like. Mm -hmm. And so not quite at the halfway mark yet, but more are lined up, reaching out to more. It's been really interesting. The one actually that I met with yesterday was a woman I met through Leading Ladies. And we connected and set that up. So Brilliant. Wonderful. Can you count mm -hmm. this one as the next one? Can I be 46? Like we're, we could be having yes. coffee right now. We're at not 40 million degrees. <laughs> Yes, I, we should, I think we, sh I I think think we should count. I do too, because it's about building a connection and building conversation. And that's exactly, again, what we're doing here Yeah, right, through this. Yeah. Explain a little bit too, like, can, is there a way to qualify or quantify the impact that that has had on the business so far? Or do you think this is going to be a, maybe next year at this time, we'll be able to see that spider web and how it all kind of came together? Because no doubt meeting that many new people is going to have a huge impact on your business. I mean, ultimately, I guess that's that's the hope is that we will kind of spread spread the word about what we're doing. So mm -hmm. I'm referring to it as the hype women goal so that, you know, we're meeting women, we're learning what they do. We're hyping them up in rooms they're not in and they're doing the same for us. So they're learning about what we do and spreading, you know, it becomes like a little a little web that spreads out um, and, you know, just connects more and more of us. Yeah, I love that that I feel takes best advantage of what women are generally really good at. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think, I think at our core, I want to believe that we're very good at supporting each other and 
Mm-hmm. And this might sound a little woo woo. So forgive me for saying this, but actually seeing each other, like we take the time to actually understand the person so that we're making sure we're representing them properly when we're in those rooms that they're not in. Mm-hmm. Mena, do you feel yeah. that? I know you're, are you just wrapping up your first cohort of your program? Is I actually just did completely. Um, it, it was the same day as the June <sighs> event. So I thought, Hey, what's, easier than running a sold out networking event at a new venue the same day as the final class of your 12 week program and graduation and and in and pick out the right sweaty outfit (laughs) (laughs) so that was on june 20th and i'm just beaming from the um reviews I've received and uh we're we're ramping up for a big fall cohort coming up soon so as much as I think everyone still needs to you know take your foot off the gas pedal a little bit when it comes to putting yourself out there in the summer you definitely need time to recharge and really enjoy the nicest part of our year here in Nova Scotia um, I certainly encourage everyone out there to make sure they're at least scheduling in some touch points during the week, follow ups, that kind of thing throughout the summer, because fall is going to come and hit us with a bang. If we thought June was busy, wait until September. And you don't want to just be starting your engine then. You want it to be already running and warmed up and ready to mm-hmm. rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when is the next Leading Ladies event? Remind us all. So September 19th is the next event back at the Halifax Club. The fall cohort for the Currency of Connections program actually begins the very beginning of, of September. So we're running, uh, we're doing a wait list over the summer. So everyone's going to hear about that soon in the next couple of weeks. So there's a lot going on as far as professional women um, networking opportunities, especially here in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there you go. And, and we still, there's 55 more slots to be a hype woman for Cindy and Shauna, right? Yeah. 55 more slots. That's true. (laughs) And still six months to go in the year. So lots of opportunity. What's one key takeaway from each of you, and I'll start with you, Cindy, because you're next to me, um, that you got from the last leading leading ladies, whether it was a connection or an aha moment, what's one thing that keeps you coming back to leading ladies? I think what keeps me coming back and what I got from the last meeting was really standing back and looking at the room. Um, and as different people were talking, really looking at who have I met before, who haven't I met? and making a real concerted effort to go introduce myself and have a conversation. Something that's so far out of my wheelhouse, you would not even imagine. But I feel like that environment allows allows me to do that. And it is it does change. It just changes the way our business is growing. Mm-hmm. And it, it make it forces me out of my comfort zone. So um, I think for me, it was not just going in and seeing the mass amount of people, but really standing back and saying, okay, I'm going to go talk to this person. I'm going to go talk to this person mm-hmm. and making it very um, critical decisions that way. Shauna, what about you? For me, um, I think I was a wing woman and loved that role because I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the embracer of all, so of all people. So it was really great for me, the event that I was a wing woman. And now I say to Mena, like, I still do it. I instinctively, if I see someone standing alone, I will go and, you know, kind of pull them into a conversation or have a conversation with them. And I spoke to one woman, it was her first networking event. She was very nervous, but she had come prepared with a question to ask everyone which I thought was so interesting and just helped her kind of initiate a conversation that then created a question back to her. So I just thought that was really a great way for her to kind of prepare and be ready for that. And uh, yeah, we ended up having a fantastic conversation together. I love that. Be Mm -hmm. prepared. Leave the comfort zone. Mena, do you Mm want to add? Well, What I'd like to add is a little bit of a, it's a humble brag, but a thank you at the same time. Um, For one of the people that joined my program, we didn't really know each other much from before. We had heard of one another, Um, but she knew, she looked me up on LinkedIn 
And she saw that Shauna was um, uh, someone in common with her. So she wrote Shauna and was like, what do you think of this program, this networking, online networking program? Like what that Matt O'Reilly is running? And Shauna, thank you so much for saying that everything I touch turns to gold, which is it does. absolutely <laughs> not exaggerating at all. And <laughs> But honestly, it ended up being such a beautiful relationship. It was amazing. And I just thank you so much for connecting us. So thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yes. There you have it. It's happening in real time. It's (laughs) happening in real time on the podcast. Okay. So we're going to do this again in September and we're going to have more tips and we're all going to plan our sweaty outfits because September 19th, it could still be sweaty. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, and we'll take pictures in our sweaty outfits. We'll have and then we'll show the after. <laughs> yes. It'll be super fun. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining us on this episode of the Leading Ladies Networking After Show. I'm your host, Erin Trafford. Find all of the details that you need, want, desire in the show notes, in the caption. You know where to go by now. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks again for listening. And don't forget to share and subscribe. Of course, wherever you get your podcasts, you know what to do. Also, if you'd like to be featured on the after show, then check out the show notes for how to get in touch with either Mena or myself. The other way you can do that is just make sure you're following leading ladies over on social and DM either Mena or myself. All those links in the show notes where you'd expect to find them. Again, thanks for listening. For the whole team here at Story Studio Network, I'm Erin Trafford. Until next time. We know podcasts. Story Studio Network.